took me a second. I was like. <laughs> back to another episode of Made Up. I'm your host, Danny Volk, and we are here in the home and studio of Matt Morris. Thank you so much for having us in your lovely, lovely home. Oh, I'm just so excited. Thank you for being here. So this neighborhood is Little Village? It's called Little Village, yep. Um, the hipsters call it West Pilsen because they want to feel like they're more annexed into Pilsen, but I'm really happy that we're in Little Village. I like the, I like the name, yeah. Little Village. It's sweet. So who lives in this Oh, so it's me and my partner Eric Rushman, and who's a painter and um, and a gallerist, and then our our cat Saint Kitten, who might wander around in the shots at various points. I hear Saint Kitten. Yep, she is about, um, and sometimes she can be quite a showgirl. So who knows? Well, I'm here to compete with her, <laughs> but can you make me look like a showgirl? We're gonna try to do something felt for sure. Yeah, um, my inspirations are kind of icy and. Um, and I'm thinking about some comic book characters, too, about how I'm giving, bringing some shape. So we'll see. Sounds exciting. Danny, are you ready to get made up? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, wonderful. Do you do this a lot? No, not at all. This is the second time I've ever put makeup on someone else. A couple of times at an art residency a few years ago, I put myself into face. I was out at Herald Arts, and I was, like, putting on makeup in the forest. And so I kind of wanted to, like, show nature how fake I thought it was. And then, like, a storm came in and turned on um, the power went out for like four or five days or something um and I didn't have any water to wash the makeup off so I turned into more and more bedraggled versions of my drag self wow so nature really came back at you yeah she she came after it in your studio what are you doing I've been working on some monochrome paintings off and on for the past couple of years that um I'm kind of resuming those and thinking about um, the life of Florine Stettheimer and some of the interpretive lenses that we've used toward Sherry Levine's work. Um, so both of them are kind of the ghosts nearby those paintings. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'm finding some sort of figure or pivot point with which to engage my work. I think I'm starting to see how a lot of that this like need to create attachment with something probably goes back to this um, having been born a twin and how a lot of the ways I came to experience the world happened dialectically. You know, my training is in painting way back when. Um, and this is really, this year and last year is really the return of seeing things that actually look like paintings. For a long time it was, I was working with more site responsive installation and making things that respond to architecture. And then over the past three or four years, um, I think that that sense of reaction to circumstances came to also include more like the conceptual um, dimensions of the spaces that I was interacting with. So like going into a museum or gallery and understanding like what are the terms of engagement here? How can I respond? to the specificities with which art is framed in this environment. For a number of years, I've used the phrase that I'm a courtesan with ulterior motives. Um, that, that That's probably how I, where I would fit into some of these critical devices in mm -hmm. talking about art institutionally. Beyond being an artist, you're a curator and a writer, and you were just telling me that thinking might be the basis of what you do overall. Yeah, that was a, it was a sweet comment that someone made when I was in Cincinnati. In the midst of installing the show at the Contemporary Arts Center, um, I had a couple of days in the middle where I was pretty insecure and trying not to outwardly show I needed a lot of validation, but mm -hmm. I was grateful that there were a few people nearby that were willing to kind of converse about what was happening. And, and one kind of old friend uh, talked about how she sees my medium as thinking, and that medium can traverse writing and making various objects or various conceptual interventions. And, um, and I liked it, I'm stealing it. <laughs> I think that that's good language and we're gonna start working from that moving forward. And so you write for New City? Yes, I'm, I'm the art editor at New City. How do you think about your sort of 
position to be able to support artists in Chicago by writing about their work? You know, I started writing right out of undergrad. It was kind of immediately coextensive with my practice. Um, that I was similar to how my studio is set up now, like my studio and my office were within feet of each other. My library wraps around the space where I make work. I used to have much more concise, maybe, rhetoric about how they relate to each other that I'm less confident in now. It's all trying to have a type of thoughtful conversation. It's continued to be very important to me to keep working within a, um, a community where we're checking in on, like, you know, you have the privilege of seeing a body of work from someone and then a year later some more work from them. And it's almost like a case study to see how all of these practices inform one another or cross-pollinate or create a sort of um, matrix of dialogue. What you're doing to my face is what? You know, I guess we're putting you into face. Um, or another way drag queens would talk about it, so it's drag, we're doing drag, <laughs> um, is, uh, is beating the face or, um, or painting you for filth. And I like that one that we're, I think we're painting you for filth. That's what we're doing. What does that mean? I know, it's a lingo that kind of is a, it's sort of homogenized out of the drag ball scene in New York and um, and various sort of bougie cultures of, of biological women and drag queens. Um, but I think I like that language because it connotes something that reminds me of Divine and John Waters and it kind of implies that we're not necessarily only, we're not really pursuing beauty in a, in a conventional sense. We're not trying to make it Pretty. We're trying to make you fierce. Why did you decide to do this to me? Well, big fan of the show. <laughs> and, and no one had quite gone here yet. But it seems like the show is kind of asking for um, drag. Like at least at some point. Somewhere in here we should kind of lean into this grand tradition of queer aesthetics and, um, and really play with transformation in the way you're represented. Another reason I'm drawn to that the language painting for filth is um, is that uh, my background's in painting. I'm trained in painting. I teach painting. And I taught a class last year called Painting Queer, um, and the first project was kind of dealing with drag as an alternative painting history alongside the painters that we kind of think of as um, as crafting the canon. But it's really beautiful, like starting to see like. There's a moment where it's like, this is a disaster. We've made, the, we've made Danny into a sort of a haggard version of herself. And then it turns and you get kind of a few pieces in the right spots. And, and then the picture is there, like the picture that we're kind of looking for with this like shifted proportions, a little bit of distortion in play and the way we're sort of seeing your face. Speechless. Uh, that's how I feel. This is really amazing. You transformed me in a really great way. It was a total delight um, and such an adventure to figure out the parts. So you're happy with this? Yeah, she's beautiful. Um, she feels like a beginning. I'm curious about the other times I'll paint your face in our <laughs> lifetimes together. This has been Made Up. See you next time. That was great. I'm really sort of stunned. <laughs>